What's going on guys, Alex here with TFL. A Little bit of a different backdrop today. I'm actually in my home garage. We're all of course working at home. So I figured I'd show you the ins and outs of a little bit of motorcycle maintenance. So I'm gonna be showing you how to do a throttle body sync in this video. Now this is my bike, it's a 2019 MT-09. You might remember my Tracer 900 review from last year if you're super into the motorcycle content we do at TFL. I decided to sell that and get an MT-09, so if you're interested in hearing why and a full review on the MT-09, let me know in the comments below. But this bike has just about 800 miles on it right now. 862 and if you look in the owner's manual fuel injection sink needs to be done at every service including the initial 600 mile service so i'm going to be showing you how to do that today i am not a mechanic i'm just a guy who rides motorcycles and enjoys working on my own bike so do with that information what you will always look at your owner's manual and if you have one a service manual is even better that way you know what maintenance is required and how to do it properly on your specific bike uh, with that being said this is a really easy process that you shouldn't be afraid of and will be pretty much identical on my mt09 as it will be on a tracer 900 a fj09 an xsr 900 and the older fz09 um, so you can use this pretty much as a step-by-step -step guide, but still always look at your manuals. I had this done on one of my previous bikes by a dealership. Uh, it was an FZ07 and I was charged about $300 for doing this. So it is expensive, but it's not hard. And the only specialty tool you need for this is a manometer, uh, basically measures vacuum pressure. This was about $120 and this is on the nicer side. This one's called the CarbTune Pro. It's made by Morgan CarbTune. Um, but like I said, about 120 bucks, but even that pays for itself the first time you use it. And this isn't the first time I'm using this. So save yourself some money, pick up one of these, uh, and don't go to the dealership for basic maintenance that you can do yourself. So with all that being said, let's start working on the bike. This is really all you're gonna need is a flathead screwdriver, a four millimeter Allen, a small one, just like this, that is uh, really handheld and not a big multi-tool or anything. Also a long pair of pliers, a uh, four millimeter Allen. You can use the uh, little one for the whole thing. I have this handle too for some of the easier screws. Uh, you're also gonna need a five mil and then a 10 millimeter socket. Uh, and that's about it. You should have most of those things already in your toolbox. Uh, the only specialty thing is the manometer. So to get to the throttle bodies, you have to take out everything on top of it. So that is these plastic side covers on both sides, the tank, and then the air box. All right, so first things first, I'm gonna put the bike on a rear stand. If you have a center stand, that works too. You don't need to do this, uh, but I find it's always easier to work on your bike if it's upright, and I have one, so I'm gonna use it. All right, this might be a little tricky to see, but there's a couple of push fasteners down here. I already got one of them that you need to remove. There we go. All three of those are out on the left side. Now over here on the cover, there is a four millimeter Allen that you need to remove. There we go. And then this cover should just pull right out. There's a little post here and a rubber grommet that needs a little bit of force to be pulled out. And then this front side kind of hooks around the lip on this front edge right here. So just be mindful of that, yank that off. The process is pretty much identical on the other side, except there are only two of these on the other, sorry, not those, two of these, the push fasteners on the other side, whereas on the left side, there's three. All right, those side covers are off. I did forget to mention this top piece, but it's pretty much the same. There's four fasteners, so two up top. And then if you look kind of down below, the other one's right there. And same thing on the other side. Okay, pretty simple. All the plastic trim is off. Now I need to remove the seat so we can start to pull the tank off. So right here, there are two four millimeter Allen bolts holding this bracket connected to the tank to the frame of the bike. So this will loosen the tank up. And these were way over tightened from the factory. These really don't need to be cranked down that tight. And these are super tight. It feels like I'm almost about to break my T-handle. 
There we go. And then over on the side of the bike, there are two 10 millimeter bolts holding the tank on. So I'll get both of these out of here. Same thing over on the right side of the bike. Okay, so now the tank's basically free. You can kind of lift it up from this bracket here. Uh, there's these little rubber edges that you need to peel back on both sides. And now the front portion of the tank, the whole thing's loose, but there's a couple of hoses under here that you need to disconnect. Now, a lot of people will actually fully remove the tank, um, but I don't wanna do that because you still need to have the electrical connector to the fuel pump connected for the MT-09 to run. So I'm not gonna run this off an auxiliary tank or anything. Uh, I do wanna keep this connected. So a lot of people just swing them onto the back side of the bike, which is exactly what I'm gonna do. So if I can, I'm gonna avoid disconnecting the fuel line and the fuel pump wiring. I'll just connect two vent hoses under there. One's a uh, breather hose and one's a uh, kind of a fuel drain. Now, ideally you would have a tank that's close to empty when you're doing this. I didn't think that far in advance, so I have about three quarters of a tank. Now these should be easiest for you to access over on the left side of the bike. They're these rubber hoses right here, and they just have these um, little hose clamps that you just pinch and twist down out of the way. All right, so both of those hoses are disconnected. You can see where they were right up here. The lines kind of drop down a little bit. Back there on that white valve, that is your fuel line. And then that black plug right there is the electric connector for the fuel pump. So like I said, hopefully I won't have to disconnect either of those. I'm gonna grab a towel, lay it on the tank, or sorry, the back of the bike, and then try and rotate this tank. All right, there we go. So just, yeah, make sure it's not gonna fall. Make sure your uh, fuel line's not kinked up or anything, but that should be good right there. And now it's time to pull that air box off. Okay, the air box has three five millimeter Allens here, up top, and again on the other side. All right, now this is where you need a little four millimeter Allen, nothing fancy. And that's because on each of the throttle bodies going into the air box, there's a little clamp. There's a better look at it. You can see my Allen wrench popping out from that clamp and it's just really impossible to get any kind of real tools in there. All right, I got all three of those loosened. You don't wanna remove the screws, just back them out enough so that they stay on there and that it loosens up all three of them. Uh, that one over there is by far the hardest. It just takes a little bit of patience to get that one undone. These two are much easier. So now I need to basically take the ECU out. Um, so there's these two pull tabs and then it slides. And there's also some wiring right here that's kind of held up in this. So. I will try and loosen these wires out of this holder. My way of thinking when I'm working on bikes is if there's something that I can avoid unplugging and disconnecting, if I'm gonna start my bike up um, while doing the maintenance, I am going to try and do that. So obviously I'm not gonna try and start the bike without the ECU connected, um, but if I can avoid disconnecting it at all, uh, and then, you know, plugging it back in before I start, I will try that. So it looks like I will be able to do that. So there's the ECU. Didn't even have to unplug it. I'm just gonna let it kind of hang out here. Now I can actually pull the air box off. So you just kind of pull up. And then there is actually one more clamp over on this side. So I'll just grab this clamp, slide it down. Pull the hose and then the whole air box. Oh, there's one more, look at that. There we go. Now I can pull the air box. All right, so now with the bike kind of stripped down, you can see the throttle bodies, there they are. Uh, you wanna be very careful now that these are exposed. Don't let anything drop in here. If something does get in here, it's pretty bad. You need to get it out. 
Um, and if you're gonna walk away from the bike, definitely cover this with a shop rag or something. So just be mindful, be careful with these exposed. Now I can start hooking up the manometer to actually start measuring this. And there's some rubber caps that need to be removed. So you can see one of them right here pretty clearly. Um, so that's where the tool's gonna hook up. So there's one there, there's one there, and the other one is kind of harder to get to. It's hidden by a bracket. Uh, it's way down in there. Hopefully you can see that. It's kind of in that bracket. So you're gonna need some long pliers to get to that one. Um, these should slip off pretty easily. You don't really need to mess with the clamps. Um, just kind of grab them and pull them off. All right, I've got the carb tune all hooked up. And by the way, they didn't send us this gauge. Uh, I did buy this with my own money. I'm saying good things about it, but I mean it. This has worked well for me, so I just wanna put that out there. I'm only using three out of the four channels available on this gauge, and that's because this is a three cylinder. Uh, so it does come with all the hoses, and you can see that they're hooked up to where I pulled those caps off. So you just slip them on. You don't need to clamp them on or anything like that. Uh, down on the engine side of the tube, about four inches from the um, from where you hook it up to the bike, you actually wanna cut it and insert these restrictors that it comes with. It basically dampens the uh, measurement on here so it's easier to read, otherwise it'll jump around a lot. So if you're using this specific gauge, make sure you use those restrictors closer to the engine side. I see a lot of people not using those. And then here's our adjustment screws, one, two and three right there. You can see that one of them has white paint. And on my MT-09, that happens to be the right side screw, but it might be different on your bike. Um, but that is the uh, one that we're going to use as our baseline. That's the one we are not going to adjust is the one with white paint. So these two don't have any white paint. Right now I have channel one hooked up to this uh, baseline one. And then I have the middle one set to two and then this outside left side one hooked up to channel three. So what we're gonna do is let the bike get up to temperature, then we'll get our reading for the channel one and we'll use these two adjustment screws to even out the other two with that first reading. So the bike's not warm yet, but you can already see I'm getting a reading. It does sound like it's running pretty rough and that's normal. There's no air box connected, so just remember that. Uh, don't be freaked out by a little bit of weird smells or sounds. Uh, so I'm just gonna wait for it to get up to temperature. Once the fans kick on, uh, I know it's up to temperature and then we can start getting an accurate reading off that gauge. And also make sure if you're doing this inside a garage, you have the garage cracked and uh, I'm gonna go open that door over there too. You want as much airflow as possible. All right, fans just kicked on. You can hear that, fans are running, so we're up to temp. Make sure your gauge is upright, level, and your uh, lines are run over the handlebars. I'm gonna try and do this as quickly as possible so my neighbors don't get all pissed off, but basically get down, get eye level with the gauge. And uh, you want to measure this at idle, but you want to blip the throttle between measurements. So let it settle and take a look. So again, this first one's my, uh, that's my baseline. That's what I'm trying to adjust to. And it looks like the uh, second one is definitely way too high and the third one is somewhere between the first and second. So I have to lower both the uh, number two and three, but uh, two a little bit more. So I'm gonna get a flathead and start adjusting. That's what I'm adjusting to. I'm not gonna touch that one. Number two right here, I'm gonna turn this, let's say a quarter turn clockwise. And it's actually, back it's as tight as it can go right there so let's try the other way first let's go a quarter turn counterclockwise from where it was originally we'll flip the throttle let it settle so that was definitely the right direction you can see number two lowered but 
it went too far. So a quarter turn was too much. So let's go and uh, bring it back in halfway from what we just did. So now we'd be an eighth turn out. We'll blip the throttle. And look at what our reading is. A touch too high now. So I'm just gonna bring it back out just a tiny, tiny bit. Again, with the throttle. Always reset the throttle between measuring. And that looks pretty good to me. Number one and two look synced up now. Now we're gonna go to that number three. That one needs to be lowered too. So that's this screw right here. So I'm gonna guess it's the same direction. So to start, just always keep track of uh, what direction and how many turns you're doing. So I'm gonna go in about a quarter turn, or sorry, that would be out a quarter turn. Throttle. Look at our reading. Again, always be eye level. And that actually is looking pretty good to me right now. Three might be a little low. So let's bring three back up. Hair high. So this probably is gonna be my final adjustment, we'll see. Sometimes things can get out of whack a little bit as you start adjusting other ones. But uh, as I let it settle, you know, you're never gonna get it perfect, perfect, but you never want it to be more than like a full one of these uh, full bars apart from each other. You know, if you're a, a hair away on any one of them, it's not gonna be a huge deal, especially once you're rolling, but um, that looks much better than it was before. It wasn't super out of sync, honestly, at 600, but it's looking pretty good right there. So I'm gonna uh, just check it one more time with the camera not in front of my eyes to make sure nothing's deceiving me. Yeah, that's looking pretty darn good to me. So can shut the bike off now. Rods will drop back down. And uh, that's it, that's the process for sinking the throttle bodies. It's really super simple. You just uh, take your, your measurements at idle, blip the throttle between, um, and just even them out with those screws. Just make sure you don't mess with the one white screw that's your baseline, but yeah, pretty simple. So uh, let's put the bike back together now. I made sure that these cables are lined up in this tab and I'm gonna put the bolts in first, the three that hold the airbox in before I do the clamps, uh, just so I make sure these line up properly. And then these are already slipped on, so they're lined up down here and then I'll just get them tightened down once all the bolts are in. Oh boy. I dropped my Allen wrench. It's not on the floor under my bike. It's somewhere down here. And uh, I can't see it. Oh yes, I can. Let's see if I can get it with a magnet. All right, I have it. Let's see if I can uh, fish it out through this slot here. I'm holding a light, a magnet, and a phone in front of my face while I'm trying to do this. But it looks like I have it. Always handy to have one of these magnets. There we go. All right, so the air box is all clamped down on all the throttle bodies, the three bolts are in, so now I just need to uh, get the ECU back in the slot and the wiring back in this little uh, wiring routing hole right there, whatever you want to call that. All 
Okay, now that the air box is all tidied up, the ECU's in there and everything, it's all screwed down, I can position the tank so I can get that bolted in. You wanna make sure you go in the reverse direction you came from so you don't wind up any of your lines. You don't wanna do a full 360 with your tank. You want it to go back to its original position. The tank will just kind of rest on this bracket right here, on this round part. Um, so it'll just kind of rest in place. And now I need to reconnect those two breather hoses uh, on the bottom of the tank. So sorry if you didn't get the best view on that. I didn't either. Uh, some of this stuff you just kind of do by feel uh, without really looking at it, but both of the breather lines are connected under the tank uh, You want to make sure your tanks positioned properly make sure none of your lines underneath are bound up Make sure that these two holes are lined up um, And then make sure that you're sitting kind of on this round part right here on your uh, your tank where your tank meets the holder for the tank so you want to check that on both sides uh, and it looks good over here. Now these brackets actually rotate, these silver brackets that remain on the bike. Uh, so you wanna kind of twist them and try and get the holes lined up um, so that you're able to put your uh, 10 millimeter bolts back in to hold the tank back down. Okay, the tank's now secure with these two bolts and uh, the two 10 millimeter bolts on either side. So now I can start with the plastic trim pieces. Uh, you wanna make sure these rubber edges are kind of fit into place. So just kind of go along the edge, make sure they're fit in there. And there we go. Now I can start popping the plastics back on. Here's the uh, plastic clips. There's two different kinds. There's a small one and a big one. The big ones are for the center um, plastics right here. So they go here and then down there and down there. And then the smaller ones are for the inside parts for the side covers. But uh, when you pop these out, the little center pin pops inside. And then when you wanna go put them back in, you basically have to push that center pin back out like that. And uh, then you can slip it into its hole and then you push the center pin flush with the top to get it to lock in. Last thing to go on is the seat. So there you have it guys. There's a step-by-step -step process on how to sink your throttle bodies. It took me probably three hours and only because I was filming the whole process. So it's not a hard job. Uh, it really doesn't take a long time. It's something you can do uh, the day of you wanna go for a ride. This bike's ready to go out again. So. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this entertaining or helpful, one of the two. Uh, definitely go back to TFL Car, TFL Off-Road, and TFLTruck.com for more news, views, and real-world reviews, whether that be on two wheels or four. See you guys next time.